Good morning, everyone. My name is Robert, and this is Step. Today, we are going to talk about something we are all familiar with: smartphones. What do you think of when you see this? Smartphones are bad for you. That's what many people think, but we are not sure. Sure. That's right. So we are going to talk today about the impact of smartphones on human health. I'm going to give you some brief background on the issue and explain. The negative impacts of smartphone on our health. Then I will bring up some of the positive impacts that smartphones have had on human health since they were invented. After that, I will give you a quick summary of our findings, and we will answer any questions you may have on the issues. Okay, first of all, let's start by looking at use of smartphones in our daily life. Two questions first: What is a smartphone? And what makes a phone smart? Well, this is Becker's definition of a smartphone. Google's research on smartphone user behavior in 2013 showed that we do use our smartphone in our daily life in various situations, which includes searching for the information on the internet. Communicating with each other, and keeping ourselves updated with news and information, entertainment, and shopping. Moving on to the situation in Hong Kong, the penetration of smartphone is quite high. According to the Office of the Communication Authority in 2013, the 65 percent of mobile phone users were 3G or 4G service customers. That means there are 10.9 million smartphones in use in Hong Kong. The reason that this is more than the population of Hong Kong is that many people own two or more mobile phones. Google's research also found that four out of five people in Hong Kong use their smartphone every day, and three quarters of smartphone users carry their phones with them at all times. As the smartphone becomes more popular and people are spending more time on smartphones, debates have begun about their usage. One debate is on the relationship between human health and using smartphone. So now I would like to explore the points that support the thesis statement. I'm going to talk about two main points. First, mobile phones may damage body structure. Researchers and experts have pointed out that improper use of smartphones may cause damage to different body parts. Mirror, in an article from 2007, found that radiation from mobile phones may produce oxidative stress in brain tissue, which can lead to a higher risk of brain tissue damage. And more research by the team. Led by the Lulis, discovered in 2009 that radiation from mobile phones may lower the fertility of males, as the radiation destroys the DNA and the mobility of sperm cells. The second disadvantage of smartphone is that smartphone apps may lead to a misunderstanding of health issue. A study by O'Neill and Brady shows that a considerable number of apps are releasing health information without the approval from medical professionals. Some apps are designed for advertising purpose and may contain misleading information. So, smartphone users may also have difficulty in distinguishing between advertisement and verified health information. They may be misled and buy some unsuitable health products. Okay, that's all I have to say about the points that an evidence that support the statement. I've shown two main points. First, the radiation of mobile phone may cause damage to our body, which includes、um, brain tissue and the sperm cell. Then the smartphone apps may spread unreliable health information that may mislead users. Now I shall hand over to Step, who will discuss the point that go against the statement. Step, over to you. Okay, thank you, Robert. So I'm Step. 
I'm going to introduce evidence showing that smartphones are not harmful to our health. There are three main points here. First, although smartphone use may potentially be harmful to human health, smartphones can also help to improve physical and psychological health. The paper by Lee and colleagues from 2012 argued that smartphones can help monitor the body condition of elderly patients. Smartphones allow users to send data about their condition to medical professionals and receive medical advice anywhere and anytime. And in case of an emergency, smartphones assist in locating the user by GPS or mobile networks and can help to save lives. The second reason is that smartphone apps may promote positive behavioral health habits and improve psychological health. As Luston and his colleagues described in their 2011 paper, the apps can motivate users to engage in healthy behavior, such as sports and keeping fit. Another team from Spain have also shown that smartphone apps have helped in developing a healthy lifestyle. By using the apps regularly, users were able to develop a healthy hitting apps within three months. That brings us to the last point that support the health benefit of smartphones. Smartphone apps can enhance psychological health. Luston and his colleagues also point out in their paper that smartphones encourage communication between people as they can browse social networking sites anywhere and anytime. People who are unwilling or unable to communicate face-to-face -face can still can get support from friends online. Research led by Park further confirmed in 2012 that smartphone apps have positive effects on strengthening the cohesiveness of social networks among users because they are able to maintain connection with each other all the time. This may relieve psychological pressure and anxiety and foster interpersonal relationship. Well, I think that covers most of the things we want to say about smartphone use and human health. Turning to the last part of the presentation, let me go over the key points. In our presentation, we have discussed the point that are for and against the statement. Frequent use of smartphone is harmful to human health. My partner Robert talked about the point that support the statement. Mobile phones may damage body structures and smartphone apps may lead to misunderstanding of health issues. I then explore the point against the statement. Smartphones help in monitoring health and smartphones promote behavioral and psychological health. Taking all the points into consideration, it appears that the positive side of using smartphones awaits the negative side. We do think that smartphones should be used in moderation. But all in all, we support the use of using smartphones and disagree with the argument that smartphones are harmful to human health. As a device um, can actually improve our health in different aspects. Okay, that's all for our presentation. Thank you for listening and I hope you found it interesting. You can find more detail in our reference list. And now we would like to open it for discussion. Would anyone like to raise a question? Yes, you have shown us that there is a high usage of smartphone in Hong Kong. Is it also a global trend? Thank you for your question. Yes, it's a global trend. There is data showing that smartphone has become more popular in many society. The research results from international marketing company Gartner showed that there were more than 960 million smartphones sold in 2003 all around the world. The company has estimated the sales of smartphones will reach 1 billion in 2014. So we believe that the smartphone will users will rise globally. Yes, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, is there any other questions? You have mentioned in your presentation that radiation from phones may damage body structures. There was a recent news story that reported that the blue violet light from smartphones may cause blindness. So is there any way that we can use the phone safely? Um, that's a good question. Well, there is certainly a safe way to use smartphones. That is, don't overuse them. 
doctors and opticians have said that the eyes problem resulting from smartphone is caused by not blinking enough and putting the smartphone too close to your eye. So, they have suggested that users um, should take regular breaks from using smartphones, hold the device in your hand, and keep the distance between your eyes and your phone less than 30 centimeters. Yes, they are all good points, and there are two more easy things suggested by WHO experts that we can do to reduce the influence of radi radiation from phones on our body. First, we should use a wire or speaker when we are using the phone, and this keeps the phone away from our head. Second, we can keep the phone in our bag instead of putting it in the pocket or out of our clothes. This will reduce the radiation that we may receive from the phone. Have we answered your question? Yes, that's fine. Thank you.